Welcome back, everybody. You know, um, a friend of mine got uh, got all bent out of shape when uh, Charles Koch came out and said that he could probably support Hillary as the as the option, saying, "See how conservative Hillary is." That Charles Koch would come out and and uh, and support her. And uh, I, I don't know if he was just trolling me or what. But when, when Brother Joe, when you come out and you say that you you like Bernie, you support Bernie, that suggests to me a similar thing. How conservative is Bernie Sanders that that uh, Joe Bertrosh Jr. is willing to come out and, and throw his support behind him? Not that I think any of that's true, <laughs> but it it made me it made me chuckle. You know the. This is this is always a uh, this this is a we we get in this conversation about um, leadership and the establishment blah blah, blah uh, with the the political leadership in this country and I don't and how we need to like talk, throw the bums out whatever you know that I don't subscribe to much of that because I think that we need we need professional political leadership in this country that uh, you know just firebrands don't have the capacity to do in my opinion but what I have been frustrated by in both parties is the unwillingness of the leadership to tell the basic truth about certain trends for political expediency for in the Dem on the democratic side, for example. And I think that you'll agree with me on this. We both can accept the idea that technology globalization and progress, just progress for progress sake has made a lot of old jobs obsolete jobs that, in the in the 50s 60s and 70s you could get without much of an education or with a high school education maybe a year of college or something and build a very good life for yourself a very satisfactory life where you worked hard and you raised your family and you were able to to have the things that made a life comfortable have the american dream so to speak and the democratic party through consolidating power um and uh and focusing more on on where wealth is created out of nothing you know in the financial sector wasn't willing to tell the hard truths to some of those folks that hey listen that's not going to happen it's not they're not coming back when we promise that we're going to bring manufacturing back to this country we probably just can't not in the way that we used to so what we're going to do as demo as democrats now granted the base probably didn't want to hear that at the time but it's a hard truth that needed to be told and then the solution is we're going to don't worry we've we have your back we're going to help you out we're if you need it if you don't have much set aside we're going to help retrain you we're going to you make make uh, take your transferal skills into other industries we're going to help you stay on stay stay afloat they didn't do that kind of left them behind kind of forgot about them because it was more fun to hang out with the folks in cambridge and new haven and la than it was in youngstown ohio and des moines iowa the Republicans have a very similar problem, but I think the Republicans is more serious because it's taken longer. It's more there's there aren't there there are many more years of Republican disaffectation than there are Democrats. I think. Um, you mean basic people that would vote Republican are just dissatisfied with the Republicans, or no? Well, yeah, but who have been right. voting Republican are angry, and so then they because so they, nothing has gone the way they want. Exactly, and so their anger is either you know vested in Trump or Ted, a guy like Ted Cruz. They. For, like I said, for years and years and years, the Republicans have been uh, Republicans have been promising certain things and not delivering on them. For years, have been playing um, playing to uh, to fears, you know, play, playing to the anger, playing because it's a lot easier to play to anger than play to hope. A lot easier, depending on what kind of uh, you, and you've seen that Donald Trump is not he's not touting a hopeful message for the country. He says make America great again, but what he's saying is we're going to make America great again by get rid of all these horrible people that are holding us down that's not a positive message well getting rid of the liberals is a positive message well sure but you would miss me <laughs> i would miss you you'd miss me so so i think that uh um so the the republicans are angry and they're bitter because the the republican leadership the conservative leadership is not willing to say look them in the eye and say look we're these these battles you want us to keep fighting these battles of principle, they've, we've lost. The, con the country has moved beyond this now. We need to focus on other things, other conservative principles that we can uh, that we can can bring out, like family. Had they, like I told you this before, had the Republicans come out and embraced gay marriage as a pro-family, pro um, uh, pro-child institution. That would have dealt. The, how would the Democrats have been able to play identity politics with that? Yeah, 
Well, and, and you know, the, the thing that's strange is you've echoed exactly what I said on the campaign trail. Right. I talked about gay marriage is here to stay. They're going to continue to drive at that. Yep. And there's a, a faction of the gay marriage folks that not only do they want equality, they want super equality. They want to get rid of Chick-fil-A. They want to get rid of the Christians and everything else. I know you don't quite agree with that assessment, but that's what I said on the, on the campaign trail. And that you should make some protections for the church so that that isn't getting jacked along the way. I'm telling you what, I might as well have taken a dump in somebody's stew. When I said exactly what, because lefty's right, at, at least about identity politics, how to embrace people, how to get people within the party to vote for you, you can't alienate them. One of yeah. the interesting statistics from um, the Reason Magazine, all right, about, now I got to put my glasses back on, political self identification. And from 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016, 2004 was the most of any uh, Republican or Democrat, Mm -hmm. about a third. Yep. And it has steadily fallen uh, for both sides, and the independents have steadily risen. Mm -hmm. That That tells you why Bernie and Trump are popular. They are not the establishment. They are not the parties leaving people behind. It is incredible to sit here and talk with my friend Lefty, be able to come up with solutions to problems, and yet, even though we know we're right, and we know and we have the the polls and everything else to back us up, the establishment just goes, huh, you can't leave an entire, this is Lefty's point, you can't leave an entire generation behind kick them out of the American dream and expect them to be happy with your party. Now that's, I don't think you're going to disagree with that. I I think there are, you know, we once, we, I once brought this up to you and you disagreed with me a little bit um, because you, you, you felt I'm disagreeable, right? When you fell back to this, this um, uh, trope of principle is principle. I once, I once sat here and I said, I think that, uh, that, the interests of conservatives, liberals, Republicans, Democrats, whoever, are generally the same. That we all want to see people treated fairly. That we all want to see people given a fair uh, opportunity. That we all want to see people take personal responsibility for their lives. That we want to see very fundament, the fundamental values of the American people, I think, are fairly uniform across the board in those general sort of ideas and that we disagree only on the ways to achieve them. You, you push back, you said, Hey, look, I have a principle X. Um, I think you, you might've said something about abortion. I can't remember, but I have this, you know, there's no winners. There's no loser. It's I have th- this way or no way. And we can't agree on that. We'll never agree on that. And, and I, while I understand that there are things that, that we also had a segment to get through. <laughs> may, well, maybe, <laughs> but know. what I, what I understand, what I firmly believe is true about politics in this country is that aside from the fact that we and another buddy of mine is going to get irritated when i say this aside from the fact that we need we desperately need political parties to organize and to tempt down our democracy when it starts to get too hot because populism is fun but it's not sustainable and it's not overall good for the country um because the because the population is very often wrong <laughs> it's very yeah. it's it's very often wrong we need, passionate yeah it it and then you don't think clearly sometimes we need political we need strong measured responsible political parties within within our political leadership to to harness that energy and direct it in pro-social rather than anti-social ways and i while i think that the republicans because i'm not going to back off this while i think the republicans have been more destructive in that regard than democrats the democrats certainly have their own questions to answer and their own people to assuage and they have a lot of work to do to repair their own brand all right that's our show for today i'm going to give lefty the last word thanks everybody for tuning in we couldn't do what we do without you we'll be back after this week see everybody Hi, I'm Representative Tom Shaw, and I love these guys, both of them. Love these guys. Get over here, get over here. Love both of them.